of course, I mentioned that it's beanie weather and all of a sudden Alabama has a heat wave. Whatever. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Autumn Crow by Cameron Cheney. This has a terrific cover by Cameron Rubik, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm going to read it one more time. I think it's Cameron Rubik. I'm not sure. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, I do apologize. Uh, Cameron Cheney uh, was nice enough to send me a copy of this and I am acknowledged in the acknowledgments uh, because I sent him some some issues I had with uh, there are monsters here when I first read it. Um, if I can find my review, my video review, I'll leave that link down there in the doobly-doo. Also, if you don't know, Cameron Cheney runs the, uh, the YouTube channel Book Movie Guy. Uh, he was one of my first inspirations to start my own booktube channel. Uh, him, Todd the Librarian, and Adam Cesar. Uh, those three guys were my main inspiration for starting this, so you can thank them for that uh, if you're a fan of the channel. This is a terrific Halloween read, and I'm going to start with my very minor criticisms and go on to the more positive stuff. If you want to read a story-by-story review, I will leave my Goodreads review down there in the doobly-doo. Let's jump into it. In the first story, Follow Me In, Cameron goes full Leland Gaunt uh, needful things here with a with a talking to the reader, breaking the fourth wall, that, that kind of you've been here before kind of deal. I thought it was a very cool way to open up the collection. Um, there's not much meat to the story, it's just a few pages leading you into what what you're going to be experiencing, which is a good spooky Halloween time. Um, I like the way it opened. I'm giving that story, I believe on Goodreads I gave it three stars, because there's not much to it, but it is a good opening for the collection itself. Next, um, I'm gonna, this is where we get into the criticisms. Uh, I'm going to talk about the two stories that were complete misses for me, uh, different reasons for both of them. The first one is the, sec is the second story, Pumpkin Light. Uh, the more I think about this story, the more I, it's not that the more I don't like it, the more I understand why it didn't, it didn't hit for me. One of the reasons is, I think the main reason is, it doesn't have the personality that all the rest of the stories in this collection has. It's told in a very, uh, ambiguous way, uh, it, there's not much to it. It's another one of the, it's, I think it's the second shortest story in the collection. I may be wrong about that. Um, but there... It didn't do anything for me. Um, I didn't connect with it at all. I think I said that in my Goodreads review. Um, there's nothing wrong with the story. It's just I could have done without it and not missed it. I think, uh, and I'm sorry if that sounds flippant or dismissive, but that's how I feel about that story. I can only be honest here. Um, yes, uh, I I did help uh, with uh, very minor stuff. Cameron was very kind, putting me in the acknowledgments, but it's very minor stuff I mentioned for the novella at the end of this collection when he released it um, alone. What I'm getting at is, I, I'm not going to be biased here, I'm going to tell you what I like and what I didn't like, and this, this is one of those stories that I didn't like. Okay, the next story is the, is the sixth story in. Uh, this is the other one that was a miss for me. With this one, I was having a great time until the other arrived. I don't know what it was about that, but what I said in my Goodreads review was it felt hokey. Um, it felt extremely out of place with the rest of the story. The problem with it is the entire story relies on that aspect. Um, I'm not sure if you could just get away with... I'm not, I'm not saying go back and edit it. That's not what I'm saying. But I, I just feel like it, was, it wasn't too much. It was just unneeded. I think uh, the, the one horror element by itself was good. Um, but adding that other aspect to it just added a whole bunch of questions that I never got the answers to. Um, I, I don't want to go into spoilers. If you've read it and want to discuss it with me, hit me up on Twitter. Um, we'll talk about it. But uh, it's, it's just one of those things where it was fine up until a point, and then it got to the other, that's what I'm going to call it, the other, and it's just, it, it fell flat for me. It didn't work for me. So the, those are my only criticisms, those two stories, and yes, I know this video is out of order, um, but I want to make sure that you know that there's very, 
there's, I have very small problems here. Every single collection, anthology, they all have a handful of misses. And this collection is no different. Where this collection shines is what we're going to get to next, which are the really, really good, good stories. Okay, um, this next one, Burnt Brownies, which is the third story in, it's not one of my favorites, but there was a lot of heart in this story. The, re the relationship between the brother and sister was pitch perfect. The descriptions of certain scenes and characters was spot on, fantastic. Uh, Cameron really nailed the descriptions in this one. Uh, you, you can see, I'm not sure what order he wrote these in, but it feels like this one is kind of like in the midway to where he got to with some of the later stories in the collection. I could be completely wrong, I don't know. But this felt like Cameron coming into his own. Um, there was a lot of really good description, but there was also some of that hesitation that I noticed in the original version of There Are Monsters Here, where he, he was on the verge of something brilliant, and it seemed like he held back. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, if stuff was cut. I don't know, that's just how it felt. But I'm giving this one three and a half stars just simply because of the descriptions. He really made me see everything, and I thought that was awesome. Now here's a story um, I'm ashamed to say I forgot about completely. I like this one a lot. I'm going to give it four stars. I need to go back and edit my Goodreads review to add this one, and that is Saving Face. It was a very, very creepy story. There are certain parts uh, where the main character of the story is kind of whispering and talking to people you know that he cannot connect with and I, I the way the way it read was very very spooky um I, I i know that's cliche to say it's not maybe the best terminology to use but it was it was very spooky um i enjoyed reading this one simply for that reason uh, it's a good story. Uh, the ending <laughs> was far more graphic than I expected, which was a good thing. I'm not complaining. Um, it is probably the only story in this collection that I would say goes more into the adult, other than There Are Monsters Here, which is Cameron easily Cameron's most mature work. Um, we'll talk about that next, and then I'll go into my favorites. But Saving Face is a it is a great story. It's one of the shorter ones, and I think I'm leaning more toward the longer stuff, which makes me feel like I would absolutely love a Cameron Chaney novel. So Cameron, if you're watching this, get on that. Next, we're going to talk about the novella at the end of the collection, which doesn't really tie too much into uh, Autumn Crow. I don't think it ties in at all. If I miss something, I apologize. I did read this one rather fast because I've read it before, um, but the, the first time I read this, I did notice some issues with editing. All those issues are gone. The new revised story is fantastic. It still has a hell of a killer of a last line. Um, it's a great way to end the collection. Uh, I'm not sure what the rating was I gave it first time, but this time I'm giving it all five stars because I loved every minute of it. Um, it was a, especially a pleasure to reread after having read the original one. There isn't a whole lot of difference here. Um, I did notice some things, but I read it so long ago I can't really tell you what I remember what I don't remember. Um, I do know that nothing stood out to me like it did the first time I read it, so I'm going to give this one five stars as well. Next up, we're talking about my second favorite story of the collection, and that is Frost. Um, this is one of the best for all ages horror stories I, I've read. Um, it's one of them. It's fantastic. It's creeped me out. And it made me feel like I was back at the Scholastic Book Fair as a kid, picking up scary stories to tell in the dark, picking up goosebumps, picking up you know these horror these horror books that are, were around when I was a kid. Um, it it really brought back that sense, and it wasn't a cheesy uh, sense of nostalgia. It wasn't forced or anything like that. Um, it just it it was just enough to make me feel like you know that it made me relive relive my childhood. Now, don't think I'm saying there's nostalgia in the story. That's just what it, how it made me feel. It gave me a legit reaction that brought me back to my childhood. And, I mean, what more can you ask for? Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic story. It's something that I will probably end up reading to my kids um, this Halloween because it does work for all ages, I feel. If you, if you, if you disagree with me, maybe leave a comment down there in the doobly-doo. I don't want people to go run out and grab this thinking it's for kids or young adults or, well, it's for young adults easily, but middle grade and below. Um, I don't want people to go run it out because there are, there are stories in this with some very graphic depictions, 
But Cameron Chaney also wears his inspirations on his sleeve. The book is full of Easter eggs. Um, full, and it, it, they're not forced at all whatsoever. It's just things popped in here and there. In fact, going back to I Have No Mouth and I Must Feed, uh, there's a crypt. There's a creep show reference that I cackled out loud about that I absolutely love. Good job there, Cameron. Anyway, so Frost, if you have kids, um, I suggest uh, giving giving it a read, reading it to them. Um, I, I think it works really well as a story that can be told out loud, like a campfire story. And last, but certainly not least, this final story is uh, second is the second of the last story in this collection. Um, it is easily now in my top five Halloween themed short stories up there with uh, the Wriggle Twins by Gregor Zane, but they are two completely different sides of the spectrum. Gregor Zane's story is gnarly, it's visceral. Uh, this one is more of an homage. Um, it is a perfect homage because it doesn't feel like a ripoff. You know what Cameron is going for and he does it spectacularly. Um, there's there's just so much in this one that I want to tell you, but I don't want to spoil it for you, because I even with the title, I did not expect what I got going in. I, I, I thought for sure I was getting something completely different, and even the ending, I, I, the, the whole thing, I just had a lot of fun with. It really invokes, evokes, I'm not sure, I'm a writer. Um, <laughs> it really brings that feeling of Halloween, um, that feeling of fall, you know, that feeling of the spooky season, that, that kind of thing. It really brings that to the forefront and lets you enjoy it. Um, and there's all these little nuances to the story that I enjoyed. Once again, I don't want to give any spoilers, but if you'd like to talk to me about it, hit me up on Twitter. Um, I don't use YouTube messages, me messaging. Anyways, I don't even know if it's still around. Is it still around? I don't know. But uh, yeah, hit me up on Twitter and we'll talk about it. Um, but this one, Cameron nailed it. Uh, this is easily my favorite of the Autumn Crow stories. Uh, there Are Monsters here is just a favorite beyond this because it was released, you know, by itself as a standalone. But of the of the strict Autumn Crow stories, um, this one, Crypt TV, is the best of the bunch. So that's all I have for today. Um, I hope I didn't go on too long and bore anybody. Cameron, if you're watching this, man, a fantastic outing. Um, I really, really want a novel from you. I would love to see a novel set in Autumn Crow bringing back these characters in like maybe a kind of a mosaic novel kind of thing. I don't know. Do whatever you want, man. I'm going to read whatever you publish from here on out. Consider me a fan. Well done. Um, I was a fan of your channel. Now I'm a fan of your writing. Uh, but I think I think you knew that already because I love There Are Monsters Here so much the first time I read it. But anyways, have you read Autumn Crow? Um, I'm giving the whole collection as a whole four stars. Uh, maybe 4.5, I don't know. I, I really want to give it 4.5. Actually, I want to give it 5 stars because of the, the two stories that I love, so, well, three stories that I love so much. But I think that would be kind of disingenuous um, to say that I love the entire thing and the entire thing was perfect when I didn't actually feel that way. You know what I mean? Um, but have you read it? If you liked it, let me know why you liked it. If you hated it, let me know why you hated it. So we can have a discussion down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E. You've been you. This has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.